At this point, Dream Chaser Tenacity is set to launch for the first time in only a few months. For the last few years, the space plane has been undergoing testing and general manufacturing. One area in particular that has been a main focus for the company has been its intricate heat shield. Here, thousands of unique tiles are positioned across the space plane to create a barrier from the intense forces and heat during re-entry. Looking back in time, the space shuttle experienced a host of issues with its heat shield, which consisted of tens of thousands of tiles. These problems increase the time necessary between each mission and jeopardize astronaut safety. Sierra Space, however, is confident the tiles they are using today are a significant improvement from the technology we saw in the past. Here I'll go more in depth into the modern space plane heat shield, Tenacity's first launch, improvements from past designs, and more. While Dream Chaser shares a few similarities to the Space Shuttle, size is not one of them. The vehicle is much smaller and as a result has much less surface area. In total, Dream Chaser uses approximately 2,000 Thermal Protection System or TPS tiles across its body. These wrap all along the sides of the vehicle, go around to the top, bottom, and even cover various control surfaces on the space plane. Recent updated images highlight the progress and complexity of this process. For one, because of the unique shape and rounded body of Dream Chaser, each tile needs to be a perfect fit and contour the body of the space plane. Close-ups highlight that there is practically no space between each tile. This is very important, as it only takes one tile failure or improper gap to risk the entire vehicle during re-entry. On average, Dream Chaser tiles are around 10 inches by 10 inches. This larger size, in comparison to the Space Shuttle and other spacecraft, is a big benefit as it reduces the number of tiles in total and simplifies the installation process. However, while the average tile is quite large, there are plenty of individual spots that require awkward shapes and installs. For example, along the transition between white and black tiles, you can see quite a few smaller triangular tiles in addition to various shapes. This, among other factors, is why the installation process takes so long. To put it in perspective, a tile application began around three years ago in June of 2020. At that time, SNC, the parent company of Sierra Space, tweeted saying, Our Dream Chaser space plane is starting to get the black and white color that's seen in renderings we've started bonding the thermal protection system tiles to the vehicle. This process would continue over the next few years until its completion only weeks ago. While this is the first physical test article and tile application, which would partially explain the amount of time needed to install the heat shield, it still took multiple years. In reality, if CR Space was installing an entire heat shield today, it would likely be a lot faster as they now have experience. In addition, it's possible they took their time and matched the tile installation with the general production of the test article. Whatever the case, installing 2,000 plus unique tiles will always be a time-intensive process because of its complexity and importance. Assuming the first launch is successful and Dream Chaser Tenacity lands on a runway, this will give the company great insight into the time needed to refurbish the tiles. The Space Shuttle had a very slow turnaround time due to the amount of work inspecting and replacing various tiles, something Sierra Space is trying to improve on. The company has already confirmed that each tile is unique in design and differs in size, shape, thickness, and density and that they plan to re-waterproof between missions similar to the shuttle. One last important feature of Dream Chaser's heat shield is the color of the tiles. Here, the location of the tiles relative to the space plane determines its color, either white or black. In this case, the white tiles reject more heat from the sun while on orbit, which helps to keep the components within Dream Chaser cooler. They've strategically placed certain tiles in different areas of the vehicle for this exact purpose. Besides the fact that Dream Chaser's tiles are bigger and a different color than what we've seen in the past, they also are more advanced. The company highlighted that SNC engineers have been able to update the TPS tiles from what was used during NASA's shuttle program with more innovation, better technology, and utilizing lessons learned. Specifically, they use more modern manufacturing techniques to increase strength and reduce cost. Not to mention, Dream Chaser tiles are stronger and lighter weight than those used during the shuttle program and meet all micrometeoroid orbital debris, or MMOD, requirements to ensure safe entry, descent, and runway landings for crewed or cargo missions. In the past, SNC also simulated re-entry environments to measure the thermal performance of the new silica tile coating developed by NASA and SNC. SNC's assessments show that these new coatings offer the same thermal protection as previously flown tile coatings but at a greatly reduced cost, all of which in an effort to make Dream Chaser not only capable of safely entering Earth's atmosphere, but also to facilitate a quick and a cost-effective turnaround for the next mission. For years now, SNC has been testing these tiles to make sure they are both a capable and efficient option. Nearly a decade ago, in 2015, Sierra Nevada Corporation successfully completed several significant thermal protection system, or TPS material development tests, for its Dream Chaser spacecraft. The TPS tests were completed at NASA's Ames Research Center and Johnson Space Center under reimbursable Space Act agreements. 
The tests provided critical data needed to support the TPS subsystem critical design review and to validate DreamChaser TPS manufacturing readiness. As far as the tests themselves, over 100 ArcJet cycles and radiant heat tests were completed at Johnson's Radiant Heat Test Facility, or RHTF, and Ames' Aerodynamic Heating Facility, AHF. RHTF provided results supporting thermal characterization of the developmental TPS materials. The test data was then used for thermal modeling, analysis, and TPS sizing. The Ames AHF ArcJet tests were performed as a second phase in the development testing to gauge the material performance in environments simulating Dream Chaser flight conditions. These ArcJet test results supported SNC's certification of the manufacturing capability of a high temperature material called toughened unipiece fibrous reinforced oxidation resistant composite or tough rock. Tough rock is used on the high temperature nose and wing leading edges of the Dream Chaser spacecraft. At the time, the corporate vice president of SNC Space Systems commented, Safety of crew and cargo is most important to our team as we continue to mature the spacecraft design. For several years, we have worked collaboratively with Johnson and Ames, leveraging their existing infrastructure, materials, and expertise to mature and customize the TPS for our unique spacecraft. Our TPS is lighter, stronger, and more efficient than previous generations. We have met or exceeded all mission requirements. We are now prepared to enter the critical design review phase for this system, he said. The tiles have the job of protecting Dream Chaser from temperatures that could reach upwards of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit on entry, while keeping the vehicle itself only at 350. For the space shuttle, the vehicle's reentry was defined as starting at an altitude of 120 kilometers or 400,000 feet, when it was traveling at approximately Mach 25. The orbiter vehicle's reentry was controlled by the GPCs, which followed a present angle of attack plan to prevent unsafe heating of the TPS. During reentry, the orbiter's speed was regulated by altering the amount of drag produced which was controlled by means of angle of attack, as well as bank angle. For Dream Chaser, there are a few spots on the vehicle that don't have tiles as thrusters are in the way. Last month, Sierra Space tweeted saying, Dream Chaser's forward dome thrusters will experience some of the hottest temperatures on reentry. Shown with the thruster protection system carrier plate, the thruster nozzles help guide Dream Chaser for docking with the space station. This, in addition to the tiles, will be responsible for withstanding the heat and forces of reentry. In terms of the first launch, United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket is still on schedule to launch in less than a month on December 24th. If successful, a launch of Tenacity in early 2024 is very likely. The test article itself is about to complete its final testing, and then it will be ready for flight. There, every one of these new innovations and developments will be put to the test in a real flight environment. Tenacity is only a cargo vehicle, so no crew will be aboard in the case that something goes wrong. A mission we can look forward to seeing in just a few months. Sierra Space has put a lot of time and effort into creating and installing a modern space plane heat shield, capable of protecting the vehicle and launching consistently. There are a lot of improvements that are meant to speed up this process and increase the chances of success. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.